Good morning. Today we continue our daily reading of the Word with First Chronicles chapter 20. As always stated prior to reading, get to a church that has Bible study or Sunday school where the Word can be broken down and shared with you for an easier understanding. Also get with some friends who break bread and just share the Word with one another and get some understanding from one another. Also get you a Bible that you can read. There are numerous versions from King James to NIV. Get the one that is easiest for you to understand. But most importantly, and above all the things that I've stated, call upon the Lord. If you knock at his door, he will open it and fill you with wisdom if that is what you seek. Amen. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, Joab led out the armed forces. He laid waste the land of the Ammonites and went to Rabbah and besieged it. But David remained in Jerusalem. Joab attacked Rabbah and left it in ruins. David took the crown from the head of their king. Its weight was found to be a talent of gold, and it was set with precious stones. And it was placed on David's head. He took a great quantity of plunder from the city and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with saws and with iron picks and axes. David did this to all the Ammonite towns. Then David and his entire army returned to Jerusalem. In the course of time, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. At that time, Sibachai and the Hushatite killed Sapai, one of the descendants of the Raphaites, and the Philistines were subjugated. In another battle with the Philistines, Elohanan, son of Jer, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. In still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, David's brother, killed him. These were the descendants of Rapha and Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. First Chronicles chapter 21 Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Don. Then report back to me so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's subjects? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt to Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel, there were one million and one hundred thousand men who could handle the sword, including four hundred and seventy thousand in Judah. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering because the king's command was repulsive to him. This command was also evil in the sight of God, so he punished Israel. The Lord, the, then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. The Lord said to Gad, David, seer, go and tell David, this is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. So Gad went to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says, Take your choice, three years of famine, three months of being swept away before your enemies with their swords overtaking you, or three days of the sword of the Lord, days of plague in the land, with the angel of the Lord ravaging every part of Israel. Now then decide how I should answer the one who sent me. David said to Gad, I am in deep distress. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell dead. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But as the angel was doing so, the Lord saw it and relented concerning the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying the people, Enough! Withdraw your hand. The angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Aranua, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his extended 
over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell face down. David said to God, Was it not I who ordered the fighting men to be counted? I, the shepherd, have sinned and done wrong. There are but sheep. These are but sheep. What have they done? Lord my God, let your hand fall on me and my family, but do not let the plague remain on your people. Then the angel of the Lord ordered Gad and tell David to tell David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aronah, the Jebusite. So David went up in obedience to the word that Gad had spoken in the name of the Lord. When Aronah was threshing wheat, he turned and saw the angel. His four sons who were with him hid themselves. Then David approached, and when Aranah looked and saw him, he left the threshing floor and bowed down before David with his face to the ground. David said to him, Let me have the sight of your threshing floor so I can build an altar to the Lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Sell it to me at the full price. Aranah said to David, Take it. Let my lord the king do whatever pleases him. Look. I will give you the oxen for the burnt offerings, the threshing sledges for the woods, and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give all this. But King David replied to Aaron, No, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours, or sacrifice a burnt offering that cost me nothing. So David paid Aaron 600 shekels of gold for the site. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord, and the Lord answered him in the fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord spoke to the angel, and he put his sword back into his sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor, and on the Jebusite, he offered sacrifices there. The tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering, were at the time on the high place of Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, because he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Amen.